All right, let's get to the main event. Like I said, two albums we're going to be listening to today. Portugal the Man and uh, Young Thug both have new projects that came out at the end of last week. Uh, to start things, we're going to listen to Portugal the Man. Chris Bike Changed Me. Um, it is a band or group that has been around for quite some years now. And there's somebody that I've always been cursory familiar with. Like you hear a song, you see a video here and there. You might like something, you might like something. And you mainly don't really go back and check them out in full. But anytime you do kind of hear them, like, oh, it's a pretty good song. Like that's kind of been my, my relationship with them throughout the years. Um, I don't think they put out anything in quite some time, like a lot of artists and a lot of bands these days, but they are back with a new project. And, uh, I remember seeing one of the videos. I don't remember which one it was. It was a single from this project and thinking this is dope. I'm definitely want to go check out the album when it comes out and low and below oh, low and behold it is here so we're gonna do just that i really don't know what to expect other than i know they're kind of like alternative artists like alternative rock maybe a mix of like rap and hip-hop in there and pop but kind of like maybe a little gorillas esque in that sense but i'm uh excited to, to hear them and check them out and see what they got to offer so let's just get right into that one all right um, let me get out of this. Track number one, Heavy Games Two. Let's uh, let's just get right into it. Push go to the man. Chris Black changed my life. Track number one, Heavy Games Two, featuring Jeff Basker. Basker. I think that's how you say it. Let's get right into it. Okay, just an intro, quick little intro, but it was a vibe. Like I could have got another two minutes out of that. Piano playing was great. Voice was heavenly. Like I for sure could have got at least two more minutes out of that. That was dope. But let's go to track number two, Grim Generation. Okay. A way to kick things off musically on this album like definitely a vibe definitely a bop like it definitely it's energetic it's fun it's playful um very positive but that kind of belies some of the darker lyrics that they're actually speaking about on this song like talking about toy soldiers coming home grim generation paint the tv black like it's clearly like speaking from a kind of cynical standpoint in terms of like where the world is right now but then like the music is so bright and happy and like has like these almost gospel like elements to it that you could almost see like playing at the back of like a sister act movie you know when everything's worked out for the better now we can all like celebrate and be happy and be cheery but meanwhile the lyrics are actually pretty dark and grim and cynical and pessimistic but i do love that kind of dichotomy that you can get from music and they really play into that and that was, it's a dope track like it's a super fun enjoyable number that was dope i'm liking that one um let's go to the next track thunderdome wta featuring black dot and uh natalia Ooh, <laughs> the four shot day i don't know i definitely pronounced that wrong but let's get right to it I mean, another kind of like bright, poppy, bouncy kind of number. Very, I got like a good amount of funk and groove to this one. Throwing in like a bunch of different elements. Like it mixes all these different genres into like this own kind of concoction that they cooked up themselves, which is a very hard thing to pull off and have not sound like good and not like overwhelming or like there's too much going on. But I think that they pulled it off pretty well here. Um, Again, like I said, it was bright, enjoyable, ha happy production almost, which kind of like plays against the more cynical, dark lyrics that they're speaking of. And Black Dot was 
an interesting addition to this. I love Black Dot, um, but I didn't necessarily love his part on this song. I felt like such a kind of like detour from everything that was going on musically. Um, and it felt kind of forced and like he could have been used in like a different type of manner. And obviously he is one of the best lyricists out there today. And it's hard to kind of like pick apart everything that he said, but there was a line that definitely stood out to me. Um, I think he said like, we wasted our youth on the young, which is mm, kind of a deep bar and a deep thought that you'll really have to kind of like think about what he's like really trying to say there. But I would definitely love to go back and kind of pick apart everything that he was saying in the lines because I love bars. But um, overall, I mean, it's OK. Not my favorite song, but there was a great funk and groove going on here that I don't think we get enough of these days. Let's go to um next track, dummy. Oh yeah, this is the song that we definitely reacted to. Um, I don't know, maybe a month back uh, and I forget which one of the streams, but this is definitely the, the song that like really made me want to check out this album because this was a vibe, a bob. It was fun. And yeah, let's get right into it. vibe a bop like i said it was a song that made me really want to check out this project as a whole and really reminded me of something like the grills would have put out like it's fun it's bouncy it creates like this perfect union of like all these different genres and sounds and like makes it their own like it's impossible not to bop along with that song like it's incredibly catchy the hook is like just makes you want to sing along and damn if that's not the definition of what a great song is then i don't know what is Let's go to um, the next one, Summer of Love, featuring Unknown, Mor Unknown Mortal Orchestra. Another one. They are uh, an absolute vibe. Like, I don't really know why I never like really checked them out before, but they're certainly right up my lane and my alley. Like, I love artists who are capable of like blending genres into its own kind of unique lane. And because I think it's an incredibly hard thing to do and make it sound real authentic. And or I think it's a very hard thing to do to blend all these different genres and styles and sounds together and to create like its own unique sound and do it in a way that feels like real authentic and organic. I think that's incredibly hard to do. And everything I've heard them so far is telling me that there's something that they are very capable of doing and everything's been a vibe, been a vibe, been a bop so far. And it's all like feel good music, even though they are speaking about like a lot more serious kind of social political issues dealing with like our society and humanity in general. But they do it in such a way that's enjoyable. You can like easily vibe along to it. And that's great. Let's go to the next track. Ghost Town. Another one, super funky, super groovy, you know, definitely has that that vibe and bop to it that they've established throughout this entire album. And it's another like album or another song that like kind of belies what they're really speaking about and overlaying with like this gl this glossy fun exterior and just seems to be a theme as a whole for this whole album but that was a bop that was a vibe and uh i'm wrecking along with that one it's a pretty quick uh pretty quick album so i think we might just do the whole thing let's go to the times of fantasy Whoever uh, Jeff Basker is, uh, I'm not familiar with. He has an incredible voice, and it is the song "Tons of Fantasy" is definitely like, kind of like a continuation of the album intro, "Heavy Games 2." And uh, yeah, I mean, vocally he's great. It was a simple kind of like piano ballad, but 
the vocals did so much to carry this one. There were some great harmonies going on. Uh, there was clearly like another singer. I don't he's not listed here, but like I said, yeah, dope, enjoyable. Um, a nice kind of like album break in between what we got in a row right there. So kind of like a palate cleanser. Dope. Let's get into the next track. Doubt. I mean, who doesn't love a good psychedelic guitar? Like when it's done right and done properly, it can just fucking take a song to a whole nother level and like blast you straight up into outer space. Like, and that is exactly what this guitar here is doing. This is dope. Like, I don't know why, but John Lynn or uh, Elton John definitely pops to mind when I'm hearing this song. It sounds like something that would fit right in his wheelhouse. Will wheelhouse and it's um for instance psych a lot of funk some groove to it like soul like this is dope i'm digging this oh, like that. yeah man like it like anything is like probably my favorite form of any type of genre or music like good psychedelic sound and guitar and production can just take you to another galaxy and this was right up there i'm digging that one made my favorite song so far on this whole album let's go to the next track plastic island there's something about that tone almost right away reminded me of like an old nirvana kind of sound could be tripping Probably not. <laughs> this album slaps. <laughs> like, I don't really know what else to say. Like, this album slaps. That whole song is just a vibe, a bop. Once again, I've said that like a thousand times, but that is the only way I can think of like kind of describe the feel that this kind of like gives like this is just good ass music. I haven't really heard a lot of people speaking about this and I don't know why, because this is just good ass music. Let's go to the next track. Um, champ. I was 1000% going to say that is exactly what was reminding me of that. What am I fighting to live? I'm living it like clearly it was kind of like, I don't know if it's an interpolation, but it was definitely paying homage to that because I was certainly getting that vibe. Damn. Okay. I see y'all. For those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, it was running from Tupac. It was released posthumously. I actually don't even know if that was kind of an allusion to like some other previous song, but that's the version that I know where he's talking about. Why am I planning to live from living to die? And that song is an absolute pop. You should check it out. I might play right after this, but yeah, that is exactly what I'm getting from this. That is dope. I like that homage right there. Oh, love. <laughs> so we get some punk and hardcore there, right? At the end of this, like, at the end of this, almost like gospel y, like, soulful track, we drop into like this punk hardcore sound. What? 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 I'm here for it, though. Let's go. Now we're getting jazzy saxophone. Like, <laughs> I don't know, but somehow this is all working. God, hey. oh, like that. All right. Absolute vibe, absolute bop. That is an incredible track right there. I love everything that they were doing there. Um, damn, like. They're showing, they're showing that they're class. This is definitely a class band right here. Um, they have great ear, great melodies, 
great vocals on this song, like super soulful. And then the homage that they're paying to running from Tupac. And if you guys don't know that track, I'll play it to you right now. I mean, obviously, for sure, a thousand percent, they're sampling um, a track and I don't really know. Oh, OK. Looked it up. Edgar Winter. It said featuring Edgar Winter, which makes sense because Tupac's running is sampling Edgar Winter's Dying to Live. <laughs> That's funny. I didn't know that, but I'm definitely not the only person that knows the Tupac version more than I go into his version at this point. I, I could play that cool, but that that is kind of the reference that I was alluding to, not knowing that Edgar Winter, who is featured on this track right here, is the original person that they sampled for that song. The more you know, you know, like reading Rainbow. But either way, it's dope. Dope homage. I'm digging it. Fire all around. Let's go to the last track in this project out. Anxiety hyphen clarity featuring Paul Williams. Bro, somebody had had to have grown up in a church, maybe like a Southern Baptist church, because this is there's like the third or fourth time I've heard direct kind of influences from like that kind of gospel revival sound that modern gospel revival sound and like it adds a lot, like surprisingly, it adds a lot and really brings out the emotion and feel that they're trying to invoke with their music and their songs and it hits perfectly right here. Oh my God. Wow. So good. So, 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 so good. Perfect outro to cap this all off. Super emotional, super evocative, like really puts you in your feels. I love the kind of touch of gospel and and almost like choir like singing that it brings to all this going on. Like perfect ending, like those last four songs to end this project were perfect. Like this album. I don't really know why more people aren't speaking about it because this is highly enjoyable. Like I can't really think of too many more albums that I've heard this uh, year that I've had a more enjoyable time just listening to it from front to back. Like they give you a little bit of everything. They give you kind of like these bobs. They give you like these more slow, somber numbers. They give you these grooves like their ability to kind of like blend and mesh and bring together all these different like sounds and genres influences together to create this one kind of cohesive sound is impressive to say the least. That is something that's incredibly hard to do. And somehow they do it again and again and again on this album. Damn, this shit is fire. Like this is one that I find myself for sure going to be going back to numerous times uh this week and throughout this year in general like this was good this was highly enjoyable and it really kind of like brings out these images and feels of you like driving down the coastline of california and just vibing out while the world burns around you <laughs> because it is exactly what it is like everything is kind of polished and clean and has like this great feel to it but when you like really dig into the lyrics of what they're saying it's all kind of dark and somber and almost like cynical in a way and speaking about like the current state of the world. But then they like match it with like this phenomenal production that you just want to like groove and vibe out to that. It really creates like this unique and special sound. And project as a whole, like Chris Black changed my life. Absolutely fire. Portugal, the man really outdid themselves like I didn't have much expectations. Like I said, I didn't really follow them that much before, but I am fully aware now and I'm taking notice. 
and this is fire <laughs> like i don't really much know any other ways to say this is absolutely fire and a must check out a must listen one of my favorite projects that i've probably heard so far this year and that is saying quite a lot shout out to them but yeah that's it for portugal the man Chris bike changing my life you guys let me know what you guys thought about the project which tracks were your favorites which tracks weren't um how does this compare to some of their past work for people who have been following them for a while anything that you wish they would have done or that you think they didn't quite work here let me know in the comments down below wherever you guys are listening or watching to this